Okay, so in this video I would like to figure out a couple of specific potential energy formulas that we can use. So to remind you, the work done when a force is external to a system um, is equal to negative the change of potential energy when that same force is internal to a system. And we can only use that relationship, again, for conservative forces because those are the only ones where it makes sense to define a potential energy function. Okay, so let's start with gravity. So the work done by gravity is going to be equal to the force times the displacement Okay, with an appropriate cosine theta. Well, the force is just going to be the weight, so mg, and the displacement is going to be the change in height of the object. Okay, so sometimes we use delta h, um, sometimes delta y. Um, I'll try to use y to be consistent. Okay, so we should figure out the sign here. So if delta y is um, positive, then that means that the um, object is moving from a lower point to a higher point, so the displacement's upwards while the force is downwards, so that means that the work needs to come out negative. Okay, so that means we need a minus sign here in order to get the direction right. Um, Conversely, if the change in height is negative, so it's going from a higher point to a lower point, then the work is going to be positive because both the force and displacement are downwards. Okay, so um, if the work is negative mg delta y, and we use this definition of potential energy, then we get negative delta u for gravity is equal to minus mg delta y. Okay, so we can then associate that the potential energy should just be equal to mg y, because m and g are constant, so a change in um, u is going to depend on just the change in y. Um, but notice that there's something a little odd here, because um, y is the height, but we're allowed to pick our origin to be wherever we want. So how does it make sense that we can just pick the potential energy value by just picking what the y value is? Or in other words, how do we know y? Um, and the answer is that it turns out it doesn't matter. We can pick any origin that we want to measure the y values from, and we'll get exactly the same answer at the end. Because the potential energy itself isn't important. What matters is changes in potential energy because that's what actually corresponds to the work that's done on the object. Okay, so um, let's just do a quick example here. So let's say that we have a cannon that's at the top of a cliff and it's going to fire a cannonball at some speed and we want to know something about what happens when the cannonball lands. Okay, so you might try to set up this problem and say, okay, well, I'm going to be really clever. I'm going to set y equals zero at the lowest point in the problem. So that's where the um, ball lands. Maybe the cannon, when it was at the top of a cliff, was at some known height above that. But what happens then if maybe there happens to be a hole in the ground that the cannonball lands in? Maybe we didn't know ahead of time exactly how deep it goes. Um, well, we could have then a negative value of y, which would lead to a negative value of the potential energy. And that probably sounds a little weird, but that's actually totally fine. There's no reason to be alarmed about negative values of potential energy because, again, we're only interested in differences. So all of the potential energy values can be negative and still give us sensible differences when we're calculating um, something about energy. Okay, um, And so we're allowed to pick any choice that we want for where to put y equals zero. We can put it at the starting height of a problem. We can put it at the height of some reasonable landmark. Um, we can put it at the ground. We can try to put it at the lowest height available. Um, all of those should be fine, and there's nothing bad that happens if the heights go negative. Okay, so just pick any reasonable, convenient um, point um, to do y equals zero and just work from there. Okay. Um, another work that we can, or another potential energy that we can figure out is one that we have the formula for the work for, so that's for a spring. Okay, so recall that the work done by a spring is equal to one half k x initial squared minus one half k x final squared. And since the work is equal to negative the change in potential energy, when I put in that negative sign, um, I'm going to flip the order. So delta u is going to be equal to one half kx final squared minus one half kx initial squared. Okay, so notice that the order of the subscripts changed. It's now final minus initial, which is actually what we prefer in most cases because that's what it changes. So now again, we can see that the energy is just going to be one half kx squared. And notice at this point, you don't have to remember the order. So this is actually much nicer. One of the reasons that potential energy is so nice is we don't have to keep track of the signs so much. We're just using a formula at each point. Okay, so um, in this case, we don't have that same freedom that we had with gravity to choose x equals zero wherever we want. Um, x um, equals zero is the equilibrium point. Okay, so for a spring, there's some natural um, length that it wants to be. Wherever the endpoint of the spring is, that's x equals zero. Okay, so now we have formulas for potential energy due to a spring, which I'll call us over here, um, and due to gravity.